G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, in that last video, I showed you how I made up this little blow off valve for a steam boiler, model steam engine boiler, and I just modeled it on this schematic I got off the internet quite a while back. And it worked out good, it, it works perfectly, it's a simple setup. And I just did a couple of slight modifications, not much. Anyway, I put the video up and got some comments on it and Alan from Retro Steam Tech said, why don't you simplify it even further and do away with this threaded section here? And I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. You could thread the body externally, so you have a bigger, bigger thread than you've got here, which is quite small. That's only 5mm. And as this is 8mm, rod that I'm making it out of, you could have 8mm thread, you see, and that would be a lot better. And, uh, well, you know, potentially. So I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. Have the drill right through the brass, this small centre diameter, but then drill down for your 5mm adjusting bolt, but then only go so far, stop about where the knurling finishes, and then have the seat in, in the brass. So it would then be brass, a steel on brass rather than steel on steel. Less chance of them rusting together and it would bed into the brass better even though this doesn't leak as it is. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have another go at this. And while I was at it, I thought, well, do I nail it or do I mill flats on the side, on each side? But the trouble is if you mill flats on each side, you haven't got much wall thickness left after you've put the 5mm thread into the body, you know, you're cutting down quite a bit. So I thought what I'll do is I'll tap an 8mm thread on the end initially and I might actually, I mean it doesn't matter how long the thread is because the, the blow-off valve can actually screw into the boiler as far as you want to put it. And then I got a, uh, a brass nut which was a different thread uh, entirely and I drilled out the thread and tapped it for 8 mil so I can basically tap this for 8 mil and then screw on the nut, lock tight it on and that enables me to then screw the the little uh, pressure valve into the boiler and it will still look pretty cool I thought. So I'm keeping it as simple as possible in this whole setup so no knurling, no bottom bit just work on the rod. This is some cheap rod I got from Banggood. I bought it. It wasn't very expensive. It's bra you know, brass. It's not the best quality brass in the world. It's, it's okay for this sort of work, but it, it's, it's fairly low temperature. If you try and um, uh, silver solder this, you can melt the brass. It must have a fair bit of something else in it. But it's, it's okay for machining. But, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it for... Uh, for any sort of uh, silver soldering, it's just not up to it really. Okay, let's get on with it. I'll do this on the Chinese lathes because I want to tap the thread using the tail stock and my thread adapter uh, fits in there pretty well. So, uh, yeah, I'll give the Schaublin a, a rest, or I might use the Schaublin for parting off as the collets are already set up anyway, so uh, yeah, this will be uh easy way to thread the, the outside uh, of the 8mm rod. So we'll swap out the, the chuck and put in the collet chuck, which is a simple operation to whiz off the chuck and whack in the Morse taper. This is why, as I've said with lays, you don't want to go past a 6 inch chuck. Because if you've got a lathe and you're doing model making and you're going to be swapping the chucks around all the time, believe me, you might, you might do it four times a day, you know. Three jaw to collet and then back to four jaw and then back to three jaw. And If you're humping anything bigger than six inch, you're going to really rue the day you bought that lathe because it's, it's bloody heavy work for anything over six inch, believe me. Okay, let's get on with it. So, chucks off. Make sure your, your tape is clean. The 
This is your collet track. She's in. Now we have to do is put the drawbar in from the other end of the spindle. Tight, just nip it up. Don't go over tight because you have to knock these out afterwards. Just, just nip it up. Just a, no more than a quarter of a turn, and we're good to go. It's as simple as that. Now we select our appropriate collet. Too loose. Perfecto. Easy as that. With a Morse type taper collet chuck where it uses a drawbar, of course you can't see through the spindle like you can with a, a bolt up collet chuck which bolts up on the, the driving plate. And they're a great idea, they're a better way to go for sure. But it depends on what's available and you know, depending on how big your driving plate is. Most of the uh, bolt up collet chucks in a reasonable price range seem to be for the 7x12s, that size lathe, you know, 8 inch swing maybe. When you get to the bigger driving plates like this, uh, for a 5 inch chuck you'll find that they're more expensive and not as readily available. Anyway, the Morse taper still works okay on small diameter stuff because you still get quite a bit of feed through anyway. That's quite a length. So for small diameter work it's okay. Once you get over uh, probably half inch, well then you'll uh, find that you can only go in probably half as much. But it's still enough to, to work on you know, reasonable length stuff. But as I said, yeah, you can't beat the, the feed through type collet chuck. It allows you uh, to just put anything through as long as you want, up to the same size as the spindle ball. Anyway, this will do the job. I'll just cut off a, uh, a length of this on the, uh, the band saw and we're good to go. Okay, so we've got 8mm brass rod in the collet, in the uh, headstock. We're going to use an 8mm die in the tailstock. Once again, I'm holding it in with a collet chuck because that way it won't mark your tooling. You know, if you use a three jaw of any sort, it's going to mark your tooling, it's going to mark your job. Collets don't do any of that and they grip harder because they grip all the way around and you can do them up with a great big pair of wrenches which is much better than a little poxy chuck key so yeah grip stronger harder no chance of marking so now we will manually I don't like doing power tapping manually we will drive the tail stock into the uh, collet chuck while well, we, we turn it by hand and once the threads get started it will then just pull itself pull the job uh, into the the die now this is a cam lock tail stock so you have to just manually sort of keep the tension just off this is where the old bolt down type tail stocks have got an advantage. You can just set the, the tension of the tail stock almost non-existent, just enough to take up the, the slop and it would then enable the tail stock to stay in position but just slide and uh, work its way into or up the job. It's a good way of doing it. Say it's having a fancy adapter, you know, uh, a sliding die holder in a chuck or a collar. You, you just let the tail stock do the, exactly the same thing. Now when you initially start off on this process, lock the tail stock and as you turn the, the collar chuck, which is going to drive the job into the die, also advance the tail stock. Just put a bit of light pressure on your tail stock wheel and that will make it start a lot easier than trying to push it in by hand. 
Okay. Now, once you get it started, then you can undo your, your tail stop and just push the pressure by hand. And it will, it will basically just work its way in as it's doing. Doing it this way is much better than doing it in a vise with a with a, uh, a stock because almost certainly your thread will run off line. It will go crooked because the thread cutter, the die or the tap will always try and find the line of least resistance. But this way it has to it has to play good citizen and the lathe will keep everything parallel. Also, you can always cut brass dry. So there's our thread cutting quite nicely. I'll do some more. We want enough room for the nut as well, so we'll uh, keep going with it. Perfect job. So now all we have to do is drill through for the relief hole. And once we've done that, then we'll... Uh, cut it to length and we'll drill through our with our five mil thread hole which will also take the spring and the ball then we'll uh, hopefully that will create a, a clean seat as you're using a you know a pointed drill not a mill bit in this case and the ball should then just seat straight into the brass on the original hole so uh, that's the plan. Once again, we're doing all this with a cheap cap and die set, carbon steel, except for the ones that have been replaced. As you can see, all the dies have survived, but some of the taps have snapped. And it, it works fine on brass, particularly, and it'll work on steel. The Chinese clones of this, I don't know how good they are in comparison, but certainly this one being Japanese, it's, it's been good. I've not, never had too much wrong with it. The only thing wrong with these types of dies is they're very shallow, so the attack angle on them is pretty severe. You know, the bigger, the thicker dies give a more gradual start profile, so they're a better bet. But these will do the job, and that's why, as I showed you, if you use the tail stock to, to drive it in uh, with the quill initially, with the tail stock locked. And then that'll get you started and then loosen off the tail stock and let it pull itself into the job. And this is a homemade uh, die hole that I knocked up. They're simple as anything. You can see how that looks. Easy peasy to make them. Once again, grip it with collets and you won't mark it, you won't damage it. Collets are the best way to go for sure. So, on with the job. Once again, I'm using a small ball bearing for my scrap ball bearing collection and I've picked one out and that's all we need for the valve you can make the valve ball size whatever you want that's a good size though for a, a 5 mil um, blow off uh, bore so we'll we'll go with that exactly the same as last time exactly the same as in this one and I've still got a, one of those springs uh, same as I used in this that I'll hunt up and we'll use that in the, the new one. We'll use a two mil drill for the blow off gallery. It's one of those cobalt ones from Banggood. Great set, very sharp. Haven't snapped any yet and uh, thoroughly recommend them. Once again we'll be using collets in the tail stock to hold the, our little drill and keep the, uh, the drill shank unmarked and keep it accurate. So in this case you go down to 2 mil. this is ER32 set. Perfect. That will do the job. So we'll use that. 
we will use a spot drill to start the the job. That way you're not going to get any any drill wander. Keep everything dead centre. And an interesting point too, as uh, one of the viewers pointed out, as centre drills actually have a, a 120 degree tip, you can use a, just the very tip of the centre drill as a spot drill. Just don't go in past that the edge of that uh, angle bit and it will work quite well as a, as a spot drill. But we're going to use the genuine article here. So we'll just do that, and once again, you want to go in up to the edge of the taper, no more. The same as you would do with a, a center drill. That's plenty. So now we'll swap over to our drill we're going to use and get on with the job. So it'll be good to go. Now, one other uh, tip here. When you use drills, always have a decent amount of the shank exposed. And that way you've got a lot less chance of breaking your drills because obviously the shank will allow a degree of flex. And if you have the shank in too far, uh, basically there's a good chance the drill will snap off on the flutes so yep just put in enough to grip it properly and then keep the shank uh, exposed and you'll do well all right let's get on with this Once again, you do brass dry and take out the drill every so often to clean out the flutes. As you're using small drills, don't go crazy on the pressure and this is where small lays are good because you get much better tactile feel as to what's happening than a bigger lay. Okay, that all went to plan. As you can see, we had no dramas. Everything went super smooth. So now we can cut it to length, turn the job around, tap our thread for the screwing uh, end cap, and uh, we're well on the way. We will part off the section we want on the old Shorblum. Once again, we're using collets. This is set up pretty much exclusively for collets, although well, occasionally I do put on the four jaw. And, uh, yeah, we should knock it over pretty quick. And this is the little aluminium quick change tool post uh, I got from Banggood that I use on this lathe. It works fantastically well, perfectly well. Once again, you have to size your tooling to the size of the lathe and the size of the work that you're going to be working on. This is perfectly adequate for this size lathe and anything smaller 
yeah, seven by twelve, eight by whatever. This little tool post will do the job. You just have to treat things with the respect and you'll get a good value out of them. Top level unit. Okay, so now we consult our thread chart and we see that a five mil bolt requires a 4.3 mil drill for the, the tap. I'll use the incremental drill set that I got from Banggood recently. I can have exactly 4.3. You could probably use 4.5 standard drill. That would probably be something like 4.5 uh, hmm, maybe. It would be slightly bigger, but it wouldn't really matter um, a lot. You know, it's still close enough that you would get good purchase. But in this case, yes, we all go with incremental drills and we'll have the exact size. So now we've got the, the workpiece. We flip it around. We'll put it in thread end. And once again, collets won't mark threads. If you put it into a three jaw, it'll crush the thread and uh, wreak havoc. This way you can grip threads, no problem. We're going in deeper than the thread, so it's even safer. But it will not mark the job. Now we'll drill the 5 mil, uh, well 4.3 mil hole for the 5 mil uh, thread, 5 mil uh, tap. And uh, in this case I haven't to drill right through, it doesn't matter because we, I know that I'm going to be drilling with a larger drill anyway. So you know we're only going to go in a certain distance so we've got enough room left for the uh, the seat and the taper and the spring and the bolt. Job's nearly done then. We now drill in 18mm and we will use the scale on the tailstock quill. So you set your drill tip level with the end and then start up the uh, machine, drill in as far as the scale on the quill tells you and you're done. Next thing will be tap the thread. Job done. Now we use a 5mm metric tap to tap the thread for the adjuster cap screw, cap head bolt. And we only go in far enough that uh, you've got enough thread for the length of the bolt. That's it. Once again, we'll lock the tail stock to start up the job. We're using an intermediate tap and we'll just get it started by locking, driving it in with the quill, with the tailstock quill. Once you get started, well then you can release your tailstock or take the tension off and then just push it in by hand the rest of the way. And then once it engages, it will then pull, it, pull the job in to the, uh, the workpiece. You can see it's doing this very easily. Right, we'll back it out and clear the, the, uh, the threads out. So we're in a fair way. I'll check the bolt, see how much we need. That should be plenty of thread, really. Just a bit more. Just another, I don't know, four mil maybe. That should be enough. Let's go and we'll drive it out with the motor. That's plenty. So the, the job is basically done. All I need to do now, well, I've still got to drill out the cap head bolt. That's a minor job. 
And uh, once that's done, yeah, she's finished. We are now going to drill through the stainless steel cap head bolt. Once again, we're going to use a collet because, once again, a collet will not damage the thread. Put that in a three-jaw chuck and you'll certainly damage the thread. Uh, we'll put her in. Nip it up. We're good to go. Now we've got all of our components to make, our blow-off valve, and what we need now is a collet block to mount this in while we lock tight the nut on. You could do it in the, the lathe, but a collet block's handy. It's another use for collets. It you to work on stuff on a mill or on the bench, in the vice, hold round stuff cleanly, securely. So we'll do that. We will lock tight the nut on. Some cheap thread locker I got from the local cheapest chips shop. That works as good as the uh, they're really good stuff, expensive stuff, you know, Loctite. It's the uh, same sort of thing, you know. I don't think there's much difference in it. And uh, put our nut on. It's the better side. You know, it doesn't really matter. We'll screw, it, screw him up. Put it in the vise. You notice I've padded the jaws with a bit of tin plate to protect the, the collet chuck. That's all you need to do. Now we'll just put it up firm. That's done. Clean it up with a bit of acetone and we can put it all together. There goes our ball bearing. There goes our spring. There goes our adjuster. The job's done. The, uh, I won't hook it up you know, and demonstrate it because I, I showed you last time how they work but that is basically the same as that but it's uh, simpler and it's stronger because it's got a heavier thread on the end and you can pull it up firm with the, the nut so overall mission complete these are very easy to make as you saw and as I showed you there's no denying that collets are the best thing in the workshop. <laughs> I think that uh, they're really good. Unbeatable, in fact. If you do this sort of work, you've got to have them. Now it's time to take the drawer bar out of your spindle. How do you do it without hurting anything? I'll show you. As you've only nipped it up, it will undo very easily, which it does. Back off the the bolt, a number of threads, get a hammer and knock it out. But no, that's not what you do. You knock it out with a hammer, but you do it with the lathe going because if the lathe is not spinning, if that spindle is not spinning, when you hammer on that, and you have to hammer on it, there's no other way to do it, it, uh, it's got a good chance of corrugating the bearings if the spindle is not going. So you're hammering in the one spot. If it's spinning and you, ha you tap on it gently, you don't beat the shit out of it. You just tap on it gently. You don't need a brass hammer. It won't damage this. I'll demonstrate it. Easy as that. 
no damage to the lathe and uh, it didn't take up, up, up much force at all. So that will now come out. Now if you make up one of these drawer bars, and that's just a bit of thread from the local hardware sh store, and then you can machine up an end cap, you need a centering device, otherwise you'll get a vibration in your lathe. So either use a tapered centering device or machine one to, to fit. And uh, once again, I don't like using tapers on spindles because it could potentially spread the end of your spindle. And then if you ever want to get the bearings off, you could have big time trouble. So I'd rather make, make a, a fine tolerance fit and leave it at that. That way you cannot spread the end of your spindle. So here end of the lesson. What do you need to use collets and a chuck? You need a collet chuck with a Morse taper and a draw bar, or you need a bolt up collet chuck which has got feed through. And they're the best sort for sure. That's for the headstock, for the tail stock, if you want to use the tail stock as well. You need a uh, a collet chuck like that with a tang on it. If you use one without a tang, just put a bit of bolt in there and it will work just the same as a tang. So you could use one for a mill and uh, with a thread going in, no problem. Just put a bit of thread bolt in there and it will eject, no problem. And of course the last option is you can have a collet block in whatever shape you want. You've got full feed through capability and once again this is ER32 I'm using, but once again you can see the advantage. It's gripping your work all the way around. It's not gripping in three pointy bits, which are going to crush and mark the work. Plus, you're doing it up with a big wrench, and uh, it's going to be uh, more powerful than uh, most chuck keys. So anyway, that's it. I hope it gave you an insight into how easy it is to use these, how useful they are and quite simply if you haven't got collets for your lathe you are missing out badly and not utilising the machine to its full capabilities. Okay, that's it from me. I hope you got something out of that and enjoyed it. Must be time for a beer, my throat's getting dry. I'll see you next time. Cheers.